All right, today we're talking about using Spark AR to make our own augmented reality over Mario Kart Live. Okay, for anyone not familiar, Mario Kart Live is a product from Nintendo that was out last week. Uh, it allows you to place a physical Mario Kart down on the ground, compare it to your Switch, and then place down checkpoints throughout your physical house to create your own house in your own living environment. So what we're doing today is taking what they do and making our own sort of augmented experience on the Mario Kart track that you can use whilst people are playing. Obviously they have their own augmented experience that you can see in this example video, but uh, we're going to do our own thing, do it through Spark AR, see what we can come up with. So let's get on to it. Okay, so to get started, we're here in Spark AR. Just head to Spark AR, or just Google Spark AR, and I'm sure there'll be a download link somewhere that make it pretty accessible for everyone. So we want to utilize here the 3D animated poster. So let's click on that to use that as our template, because it's going to help save a lot of time on just writing code that we don't actually need to do ourselves. Okay, so we have here the basic project. Inside this, we have a few different pieces in our scene which include like our target tracker uh, and also the elements that we're going to show out to the screen like this currently there's a sphere there now we're going to change this to be more suitable for our case but let's get started by changing out the image tracker so to do this uh, we want to actually replace this thing called replace me uh, and that's because it's the texture that they've used as the example so we want to set a different file into this sort of area so I have taken a photo of the number one flag and I'm going to bring that in to our Spark AR project. Now we can see here in the bottom right uh, the preview of the actual image itself which is the first flag or the first checkpoint that you go through. And so we're going to want to replace basically the texture that it's currently used. So currently we have this texture called replace me and we're going to change it to, in our case it's called image tracker. It's called whatever your file name is in the actual uh, for the file that you've created and saved. So that gives our base sort of project um, to having our image tracker in there. Now what we're going to want to do is create three images, basically in this case our example is we're going to create three images that we are going to cycle through each image as you tap on the screen. And so we're going to create those three images and then we're going to bring them into this project. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've got the image in Spark A itself, now we need to create something that's going to go over the top as our augmented reality. So in my case, I'm going to create a few images here to track whether it's lap one, two or three uh, for the user. And basically the user is going to be able to click on the screen and it's going to go up one each time that they go through. So we're going to create three graphics. I'm going to use Canva. I've got that open now. I use Canva for a whole bunch of different things. I'm going to use that to create a few graphics so that we can put that into Spark AR. So I'm going to go through, create them, and I'll come back to you. Okay, so now that we've got our three images generated, I went to Canva, I went and exported them all as just PNGs in this case. What we want to do is, in our project here, uh, towards the bottom of the screen is an Add Assets button. So we can see, I'm just going to move the screen across a little bit, we can see here this Add Assets button. Uh, we want to click on that and it's going to bring up this list. And what we want to do is, we actually want to import our files in. Uh, but we want to import them in as an animation sequence. So I'm going to create an animation sequence. I'll just leave it as animation sequence zero. And in here, uh, up the top right, is the ability to choose your textures. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose our file. We're going to navigate to our file uh, to our images that we've just created. And I'm going to select all of them. So one, two, three. And now we have our three images brought into the project as an animation sequence and there's a reason why we've done it as an animation sequence here. So to get them visually showing in the preview what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the drag here and select plane 
and under plane we're going to add a material and we're going to create a new material and for now I'm just going to leave it as material 0 I'm going to double click on it and go into that material itself and we want to choose under the texture the animation sequence and so if I just at the moment uh, delete this this uh, the diamond or whatever it is the sphere if we we, we can kind of see, but it's actually really hard, but that's flicking between all three of the of the animation sequence uh, pieces. So what we can do is, in the animation sequence uh, itself, we can just turn off the loop so that it doesn't keep on doing that over and over again. Otherwise, it's going to keep on going forever and it'll be crazy. So for now, we're just going to turn that off so it's just staying static. And what it's basically doing is it's outputting now our three images in there. And so we now need to size this correctly. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to change like the scale uh, as an example to get this more in line with the scale that I used as the actual original dimensions of that file. So for me, I'm going to probably leave the Y as like around 1.2. So it sort of goes above the, um, the image target. And then I'm just going to use the dimensions to figure out what do I need at times 1.2 by to get my X. So I'm going to quickly do that and I'll get that set up. Okay, so I've roughly got the image proportions kind of right. I also, just as a heads up, I moved the image forward so it's no longer in line with the image target, so it's slightly in front of it now. Now what we need to do is we need to go and create some patches so that we can set up that each time a user clicks on this item that something occurs. So over on the right here we've got on the plane, on the plane layer there's a create patch and we want to create a patch on the object tap and basically it's going to bring up your pane viewer and if we whoops we zoom out a little bit oh, okay let's let's maybe leave it at that because it doesn't want to zoom out what we want to do is basically each time the the object is tapped we want to count up one so we're going to create an encounter and we're going to have the maximum is three because in this case we have three images you could uh, increase or change that if you wanted to have more items as well. And then in the animation sequence, so I've selected the animation sequence in the layers as we can see over here. What we want to do is on the right side there is the current frame option. So we can click on the little arrow next to current frame and then this just brings in this as an option in our, in our patch editor. So now basically we want to connect the count to the current frame and so that each time someone clicks on an item it increments it by one. So if we go to the simulate touch, touch option we can click on this, we can see it goes to number two, we can click on it again, it goes to number three and then it goes back to one. So it goes, it's just going to cycle through each time. So that's the sort of main gist of the actual uh, augmentation itself. Now we're going to put this onto a phone so we can simulate it and check it out in action. And so that's it guys, we've gone through, we've created our own augmented reality with Spark AR and put it over the top of Mario Kart Live. Guys, if you have any other ideas, please put them down in the comments, I'd be more than happy to explore them. Until next time, see ya.